welcome to the committee the whole meetings um, for August 8th, 2016. Uh, the first thing we're going to do today is we have a closed record hearing to consider a petition to vacate an unnamed alley west of Franklin Street and a portion of Franklin Street all located between Kentucky and Iowa Street. This is a closed hearing, so all records have already been submitted. There will be no new public admissions to our uh, hearing today. Uh, our summary statement, the Bellingham School District has petitioned the City of Bellingham to vacate an unnamed alley west of Franklin Street and a portion of Franklin Street as shown on Exhibit A to accommodate the redevelopment of the Options High School at, 20, at 2015 Franklin C. The hearing examiner held a public hearing on this petition on May 18th and 22nd and recommended approval of the vacation petition as shown in the findings of fact. Conclusions and recommendations are attached in our packet. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alan Mariner. Thank you. Uh, Alan Mariner, a deputy city attorney. Also here uh, this afternoon are the lead planner for the street vacation petitions, Brian Smart, um, Chris Como, the city's transportation planner, uh, Leslie Bryson, the parks director, and from the school district, Ron Cowan, and the school district's attorney, uh, Phil Circa. So they're here to answer any questions you may have uh, based on the record that was created before the hearing examiner. Um, this uh, project to replace the Options High School required two things. Uh, first, a, a conditional use permit, uh, which the hearing examiner approved with conditions in a decision dated July 15th of this year. Um, any appeal of the conditional use permit decision is to Superior Court. The City Council does not have any jurisdiction over that decision. Uh, what you are here today to consider is associated with the conditional use permit is a street vacation uh, petition submitted by the school district for the Options High School project and that's what you're going to be deciding on uh, this afternoon. Um, uh, as Ms. Vargas has indicated, it, the areas to be vacated include two different areas. One is an unnamed 20-foot wide alleyway. It's 400 feet in length, just west of the Options High School. And you can see that is the pink area right to the, to the um, west of the site. Uh, the other uh, area to, to be vacated is a portion of Franklin Street. Uh, and for the first 320 feet, it's 10 feet. And then you can see at the very bottom, it expands to 20 feet. So those, those are the two areas that uh, the school district is requesting to be vacated. Um, as shown, as, as documented in the hearing examiner's recommendation, the right-of-way vacation uh, will facilitate a better options high school project. However, the school district can still proceed under their uh, conditional use permit with the project, even if council uh, denies the street vacations. Um, the, city, uh, the, the, the school district is seeking uh, the vacations, as I said, because it will make for a better project. Uh, vacation of the alleyway, um, the 20-foot wide alleyway will in, uh, allow for the construction of a full-size turf field to the west of the uh, Options High School site. It will also allow for some additional outdoor area for the Options High School patio and some other areas. And, it, and the vacation of the Franklin Street right away allows the school district to shift the whole project, gives them more room, shift the whole project to the east, uh, which again frees up land, additional space for the turf field and for the, uh, the patios and other uh, option high school facilities on the, on the west side of the project. Um, the right of way to be vacated is not needed by the city. The bicycle and pedestrian path provided by the alleyway will be relocated to the east side of the project along the Franklin Street right of way. And you can see that here. Here's the alley right here, and it will be relocated to the yellow. Uh, testimony from city staff at the hearing um, uh, showed that the uh, 
relocation of the uh, pedestrian bicycle uh, trail uh, will actually improve non-motorized circulation and safety by moving it over to the Franklin Street right away. The vacation of that portion of Western, and the other thing that I would say is that Brian Smart and Chris Como are here to answer any questions that you might have as to, based on the record, as to why that's the case. Um, I'm not the expert on transportation issues, but we have the expert Chris Como here. Um, the vacation of the um, of the Franklin Street right away is not needed because even with the vacation, there'll still be 60 feet width for the right of way, which is what the city typically looks for, uh, and it will uh, not affect. It will affect neither non-motorized or motorized traffic on a street that for all essential purposes, dead ends, and there's not much traffic. Um, so based on the public hearing, there, there's four and a half hours of public hearing on both the conditional use permit and the street vacation, two different dates. Um, the hearing examiner found that the vacation met the city's criteria and the state criteria and recommended uh, vacation of both rights away. Um, the hearing examiner's findings of fact, conclusions, and recommendation are included in your packet, page eight. The complete record was emailed to you and available for your review in council office. You should base your decision on that record that was created before, that, before the hearing examiner during that four and a half hours of public testimony. Um, and you should also base it on a review of the hearing examiner's report, which is in your packet. Um, if you approve the petition, uh, council must determine the compensation that the school district should pay for the vacation of the right of way. And as documented in the hearing examiner's findings, uh, the value um, shown by an appraisal of that property is $64,000. Um, staff is recommending, uh, as we have in other uh, similar street vacations, the last one being the Lowell uh, Elementary School street vacation that we council approved uh, about a year and a half ago to allow for the expansion of Lowell School, but staff is recommending uh, that no compensation be required because of the public benefit of um, getting rid of these portable buildings and constructing a new options high school facility. But you, you need to make that decision and uh, we included our recommendation in the uh, ordinance, draft ordinance before you. Um, so at the end of the hearing, council must either approve, uh, modify or reject the hearing examiner's recommendation. If you vote to approve uh, the hearing examiner's recommendation uh, you and approve the vacations, you should make a decision on compensation. And you should also consider a motion this afternoon to bring forward the vacation ordinance in your packet for a first and second reading this evening. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back to Council President Vargas. Council, any questions? Council Member Lilliquist. Thanks, Pinky. I, I guess I, I must say that I have the hardest time with the um, assertion that this results in an improved bicycle system. So I guess I'd like staff to address that point. What we have now is a physically separated, protected bike path, and what we would have if we accept all this, is an unprotected shared bicycle lane. That does not seem like an improvement to me. Okay, so I'm gonna, Chris Como can address that and based on the, the record before the hearing. I myself wouldn't use the word improvement. I would say that this doesn't uh, compromise the purpose and function of our bicycle network in any way, shape, or form. And the connection remains um, the purpose and function of a bicycle connection in here uh, is essentially the same. I would say, however, that from a public school standpoint, the integrity and the security of the school campus is better with a public pathway at the edge of the campus instead of piercing the, the campus. We're talking about a new school being built and uh, it seems a little bit odd that we would be directing people through a campus like this with a non-motorized connection. Um, but uh, again, from a transportation standpoint, the connectivity is there. The issue of going from a, quote, protected bikeway to an on-street facility, as was mentioned, there's almost no traffic on this Franklin Street dead end. It's gonna serve a parking lot specifically for the school. The people will still be routed up to this. It'll tie in 
equidistant between the Ellis Street Bike Boulevard and the Grant Street Bike Boulevard. We're putting in a Kentucky Street Bike Boulevard right now. They're all the same type of facility, so it doesn't really change that in any meaningful way. Councilmember Murphy. I live just a couple of blocks away from here. I'm a distant cyclist, so I cycle in this area every single week, and I have absolutely no concerns about the reconfiguration. I just believe in what the report says, that we need to do outreach and signage about that to help educate the community that their regular route is changing. Um, Kentucky Street is perfectly fine the way it is with showing that this is now becoming a bike-friendly area. And since Franklin and that area doesn't have the same traffic, I don't share any reservations about that. Also, I really want to support the redevelopment of this area because, just to state it simply, I think students need options. I'd just like to say that um, our bicycle wayfinding system will be begin its implementation later this year. Great. Councilmember yeah. Forneman. Yeah, I, I understand the concerns, Michael, with the, but like Roxanne, I've bicycled through that area a lot. And and there, the, uh, the Franklin Street isn't, there's hardly any traffic on it, so that's not a big concern. I will miss reading the graffiti along, <laughs> along the trail when they, when they move it because they all constantly put up new graffiti along the walls there by the school. But, <laughs> but other than that, I, you know, I think we could, the trade-off will work with it for me. In regards to the graffiti, yeah. you'll still be able to read that <laughs> <laughs> because that trail where the graffiti is is actually under the letter C. Um, the building is actually under the letter C on current trail. Oh, cool. So you'll continue <laughs> along that amenity um, and then it will connect, as we said, into Franklin. Franklin is also a upside down dead end T. Um, or not Franklin, uh, was that Iowa Street? So Iowa Street is vacated at both ends, so it's an upside down T. Talking with a couple of our crime prevention officers from the police department, they actually saw that as a benefit to have the trail relocated that to that side because there's um, literally campers that use that area. So that would actually provide more eyes on the street um, instead of sending it up through the, through the alley as it stands now. Um, also, by relocating it to the uh, legitimate street intersection, it takes out the mid-block connection, which, as a couple of you, I've also used that trail before, and cruising along, I've almost gotten clipped a few times. So it's, it's a better location to have people heading north and south along that. And as Chris said, it connects to our bike boulevards in Ellis and Grant Streets. If you've been down Cornwall recently, you can also see the city's improvements to neck down um, Cornwall Ave to get a little bit safer pedestrian crossing in there. So there's been substantial pedestrian and bike improvements in this area. Councilmember Hamill, then Knudsen. I guess more of a comment than anything else. So I live right across the street from this project, uh, 317 Kentucky Street. So we. <clears throat> I've you know, lived there for 10 years and seen the, the portables. Um, I think having, and I, I realize this is outside the, the scope of what we're talking about today, but having a single facility, I think philosophically for me is a, um, a better um, use of that property. As, as relates to Councilmember Lilliquist's comments regarding the, the rerouting of the trail, um, I, I see a lot of, and this reflects Mr. Smart's comments too about uh, mid-block uh, bicyclists coming out of the of the trail onto the street without stopping there's a safety issue here um, i think having the um, the bike trail even though it is a shared use uh, um, along franklin with the stop signs having the controlled intersections there just hopefully will improve the the safety of that that area um, for months out of the year there's no there's virtually no traffic because the school is not in session um, the school gets out around 2 30 2 45 so the evening traffic really i don't see that as being an impediment to Bicycle safety along Franklin, uh, and on the, week, on the weekends there's no, there's virtually no traffic there. So, um, yeah, thank you. Councilmember Knudsen. Yes, I uh, appreciate the school district coming forward. I'm happy to he happy to read that there was a second hearing after questions were raised about not being noticed properly and everything like that. So I'm prepared. I move the ordinance to adopt the hearing examiner's finding and facts with no compensation. Second. Mm -hmm. 
Council Member Lilliquist, then Borneman. Actually, I still have uh, a question. The other thing that was raised as kind of a funny issue is that we have a policy which says we should not do vacations along an open space. And staff apparently had said uh, and testified that the trail right along what is really an open space was not actually an open space because though the city counts it in its overall inventory citywide of open space, we don't include it in the inventory that we ourselves personally track uh, and develop that is parkland and publicly owned land. In other words, it's, own, it's open space for in one sense but not open space in another sense. It seems to me like we're cutting a very fine line. It seems like it's open space in all senses of the word but a technical sense. So I'm having a hard time going against um, that policy that says we shouldn't do that. Can someone please explain to me what the thinking was to why we had that policy in the first place? That why, we, why would we say we shouldn't vacate in open spaces? I believe that was the hearing examiner's interpretation of uh, reading into the pro plan. Uh, when I read the hearing examiner's um, order that it was his interpretation of reading into the pro plan of what open space is and isn't versus a staff memo about that. But as far as the uh, requirement in the vacation, I think it's uh, number nine, Alan, policy. No. Policy number four, vacation policy number four, right of way adjacent or leaning to any park, open space, view, natural area, or other natural man-made attraction should not be vacated. I would add to that, I think that's the one policy that the hearing examiner struggled with the most, as you can see in his decisions on pages 15 and 16 of your packet, but he said that you could argue either way. It was very. It was a fine line. If council wants to reject the uh, the street vacation based on that, it can. But it can certainly also, as the hearing examiner did, uh, say that 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 condition is met because it's not natural open space. It's very developed uh, fields and tennis courts. But the criteria includes man-made attraction. Any other natural or man-made attraction. A ball field sounds pretty much like a man-made attraction, a big open playing field. I guess one of my problems is I've just been told, this hearing examiner, this is a closed record hearing and all I have is this. The hearing examiner says that he deferred to the staff's interpretation of open space. Staff says that really wasn't our interpretation. The hearing examiner writes it's an improved bicycle circulation system. Staff says, well, they've not really improved, it's just not compromised. So the record I'm reading doesn't match the testimony I'm now hearing. You're not hearing any testimony well, right okay. now. <laughs> the answers I'm hearing. Councilmember Borneman. Yeah, uh, I'm going to definitely support this. And, and regarding the compensation part, Options High School and the students of Options High School, many, anyone knows anything about Options High School, many of the students that attend that are pe kids who have felt alienated by the community, a big part of their education system, and being stuck in a way in uh, trailers and stuff while everybody else has the real nice buildings and stuff just marginalizes them even more. I think this is a huge benefit for the community in, in terms of allowing options to establish a real building in schools and equal footing for some very good kids who sometimes have learned in a, on a, in a different learning pattern than being able to just sit quiet and keep your mouth shut and take it all in. People learn differently and options is a great school. I've worked with them for a long time and I think the compensation part, yes, I hate to give that up, but I do think there's a huge public benefit for it, so I will support that as well. Any other discussion? Councilmember Lilliquist. Options is a great high school. Um, I would be happy to see it be built, as you say, put in real buildings, not portables. Um, but to that end, uh, does the record include any discussion of alternatives? For example, we have an 80 feet of right of way on a dead end street 
Travel lanes can be 12 feet wide and sidewalks eight. We don't need even 60 feet of right of way to put in a very low volume road. The school district could have asked for 20 extra feet, you know, on the east side, not 20 on one side and 10 on the other. Was that alternative discussed in the record? No. Okay, we have a motion in front of us, a motion to accept the recommendation with no compensation. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, motion carries 6-1, and that closes our... Uh, oh, we, we've sorry, got a couple Alan. more things. I'd like a decision on the compensation. So the motion recommended no compensation. Okay. Does right. that cover it, or do we need a yes. separate motion? Yes, okay. I'm sorry. Wonderful. All right, so with that, our record, our, oh. We also Alan? need a motion for this evening to bring forward the ordinance for first and second. I move Murphy. that we bring this forward for first and second reading tonight. Okay. Second. Discussion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Alan, did we meet requirements? <laughs> yes, thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> Be careful before I jump the gun again. Uh, all right, thank you very much. And that is the conclusion of our closed record hearing to consider a petition to vacate unnamed Alley West on Franklin Street.